Ladies and gentlemen, we present the TV Lark with our three stars, Leslie Phillips, Stephen Murray, and John Pertwee. Through the efforts of Mr. Murray's production team, Troutbridge Television Service has successfully brought about a tremendous wave of complete indifference from viewers in the area. However, one member of the team, floor manager Pertwee, is still certain that television should be commercial as far as he's concerned. He's about to call at the deputy controller's office to collect his signed claim form for expenses. Ha <laughs> ha! Optimist. Good morning, Vera. Here is old Thunderguts lurking in his inner sanctimonious. In his fart. <laughs> Give us my claim form for me expensing me to give me vacations and I'll off it. Before he has second thoughts about having approved them. He hasn't approved them with his first thoughts yet. He refuses to sign it. Refuses to sign it? How dare he? <laughs> there is nothing on that claim form that isn't a legitimate fiddle. Well, the one that really got him was this bit. Oh, yeah, Joe. Or in a helicopter to attend an outside broadcast. <laughs> well, what's wrong with that? I ought to get there. So did he, and he saw you arrive on a bike. <laughs> What's that leave me, then? Threatens for a stamp on a letter. Yeah, very nice. At least he can't argue about that. He can. <laughs> he reckons you shouldn't have sealed the envelope, so he's cut it to tap and take me. Blimey, the old skin flint. Well, that's properly torn it, that is. I was relying on that lot. I was going to ask you out to dinner. Crumbs! Yeah, probably would have been. <laughs> Yeah, then, uh, after that, I thought we might uh, have a butcher's at the Trout Bridge Hippodrome. Oh, oh, did you? Well, Mr. Pertwee, strangely enough, I'm not that keen on seeing sultry Cynthia the volcanic nude. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? It's not sultry Cynthia this week. It's Wiggling Winnie. <laughs> yeah, she's in that new spectacular. Look, Ma, I'm Starkers. <laughs> Real cool, I'm sure. Come in. Hello, Vera. Mr. Povey asked us to come here at the double. It's yes. Said <laughs> Vera, will you acquaint your superior of our presence? Whatever. Tell old Thunderguts we're here. Ah, all right, then. Well, what is it? Huckleberry Hound, Yogi Bear, and Boo Boo are here. <laughs> what? The production team are here. Oh, oh, I see what you mean. Send them in, please. After you, Yogi. <laughs> what? <laughs> Mr. Murray, sir, I don't think by any stretch of the imagination we can say that this one is smarter than the average bear. <laughs> now, just a minute. On the contrary, immediately. Lead on. Oh, it's you three. Come in, come in. It's about time you got here. Gentlemen, I would like you to meet Mr. Wynne Stanley of Wynne Stanley Washing Machines. Now, this is Mr. Phillips, our director. How do you do, Mr. Wynne Stanley? This is Mr. Murray, our producer. How do you do, Mr. Murray? I'm delighted. Oh. <laughs> we have met, actually. Yogi? I thought your face was familiar. <laughs> Boss cat? <laughs> Glad to meet you, gentlemen. Yes, well, uh, now the introductions are over. I must tell you that Mr. Wynne Stanley has suggested... Uh, Mr. Purvey, sir. <coughs> Mr. Wynne... Uh, sir. <coughs> Mr. <coughs> Miss... <coughs> all right, all right, you win. Uh, this is Mr. Pertwee, our floor manager. At last. <laughs> Charm the delight in a mate, you're a quite limited vacation, I'm sure, sir. And as a good lady... Oh, well. Yeah, that's good. And the rest of the family in tip-top form, I trust. <laughs> Thanks. No twinging screws. Oh, no. Sudden pots. No. Pains in the head, back. No. Athletics foot. Last man's knee. Grow up. Uh, no, but you're getting warm. Oh, I am sorry. Well, all right, Bertie. No need to go to it. <laughs> now then, Mr. Wynne Stanley has suggested that he would be interested in buying regular advertising time from TTV if, and only if, we had a weekly serial. They create a regular viewing audience, you see. People get the gorping of it like, and that's what counts. It do that, it do. Do it? Uh, I mean, I mean uh, does it? It do. Well, I think, uh, I think Mr. Wynne Stanley... Of Wynne Stanley washing machines? If it washes white and well, it's a Wynne Stanley. 
That's our slogan, of course. All right. Uh, and the rah rah rah. You know, be quiet, both of you. Now, I think we ought to seriously consider starting a serial on TTV. And so I've asked you, gentlemen here, to see if you have any ideas on the subject. Well, sir, these days the popular taste seems to be for something that portrays a tough realism and unflinchingly shows up the grim truth of what really goes on behind the scenes. You mean like Zed cars? <laughs> no, compact. <laughs> Yes, yes, that, that's the one where, where the characters get promoted or, or receive fabulous offers to go to America or suddenly get the chance to rejoin their husbands in Tibet. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And the actor in that part knows that after the next episode, he'll be currently appearing at the Labour Exchange. <laughs> Again. The other type is the hospital lot where the character pops into the ward and has something alarming for three weeks. And a week after, he's currently appearing... At the Labour Exchange. <laughs> Again. Well, Bobby, <clears throat> these lads of yours seem to have got the idea all right. You must be proud of them. Oh, he is, sir. He is. Practically speechless in admiration at times. Aren't you, Mr. Povey, sir? Well, speechless anyway. Now, as I see it... Oh, shut up a minute, Bobby. Do. Let the brains department have a say. Brains department? Mr. Winstanley, allow me to... No, tell... I won't. Uh, now, come on, lads. What's next move? What had you in mind, like? Nothing. <laughs> I, I mean, nothing like anything that's been done before. Lovely, lovely. Go on, lad. Well, that's as far as I got, actually. <laughs> Look, if I might make so bold, Jensel... Oh, please do, Mr. Perfidy. Well, why don't we combine the uh, popular taste for realism with the popular taste for horseplay and agencies in hospitals? Eh? Oh, I see. A sort of... Uh... Z ambulances. <laughs> a lovely title, sir. A lovely title. I like it, Bobby. I like it. Z ambulances. Set that up and Win Stanley washing machines, if it washes white and well, it's a Win Stanley, will book an advertising spot in that for the run of the series. For the run of the series? Aye. Well, well, what are you waiting for, gentlemen? Not to get on with it. Get back to your offices and start planning the thing. The first episode must be on the screens in a fortnight. Well, that shouldn't be too. Uh... I think I'd like to apply for my annual leave. <laughs> Wouldn't we all? Said ambulances, you and your bright ideas. Well, I, well, I was just sort of talking. You sir. were just sort of talking us into the muck. Yes, and twice weekly muck at that. <laughs> I get the feeling that Pertwee is none too popular here. I was wondering when that would sink in. Hello, you chaps. I'm most white. So sorry to barge in. <laughs> Lummy Batesy, well, what are you doing here? Uh, well, I'm rather afraid I'm the designer. And another department of TTP bit the dust. <laughs> uh, how did you come to be mixed up with the commercial telly? I was recommended by BC Telly. Oh, they're a ruthless lot at Lime Grove. <laughs> Mr. Bates, are you by any chance doing the designs for the Z ambulances set? No, no, I've done them. To be on the safe side, I've designed an exact copy of a ward in the Troutbridge General Hospital. Here we are. Mm. Mm, oh, yes, I must say. It does look jolly authentic. Yes, certainly does. And unfortunately, it is. Well, what do you mean, unfortunately? Well, it's a slight snag, sir. Now, look. Mm. Here's the east wall. Yeah, oh, yes. Mm. And the south wall. Well, oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Mm. And here's the west wall. Oh, nice. And the north wall. Oh, lovely. Mm. <laughs> yes, yes it's, it's all there. Exactly. Mm. It's got four walls. Mm. It's a solid box. Yes. <laughs> How are we supposed to get the flipping cameras inside? Hmm. <laughs> Tricky. <laughs> I know, I know. Look, as there's no ceiling, perhaps we could lower one through. I do see what you mean. <laughs> Mr. Bates. Uh, say, say no more. <laughs> I'm on my way back to the drawing board and my bit of bungee. See you later. Yeah, hello? Ace Cameron Goldstein, yeah. I'm fed up with polishing my lenses and showing the test card. When am I going to get something I can snap? <laughs> oh, very shortly, I hope, Goldstein. There's been a slight hold-up with the sets, but we hope to have the first camera rehearsal of Z ambulances in the morning. Do you? Well, I hope you're right, because I want to get in as much practice as possible before transmission time on Tuesday. Why? 
Tuesday's my evening off. What? Goldstein, you can't rehearse the show, then take transmission time off. You must be there. Ooh. Well, in that case, I'll volunteer to stay. A double time and another evening off in lieu. What a funny way to spend the evening. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, 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 no, Goldstein. Hello. Hello. I have a good mind to phone him back and really tell him what I think of him. <laughs> Why don't you work out a right mouthful and let him have it at camera rehearsal tomorrow instead, eh? Yes, don't let me know what you're going to call him, because I don't want to repeat it when he cops my fruity dartreeb. After. <laughs> Now, you know me, Fatso, I never was one to complain. Why, I keep asking myself, hmm? why is Ace Cameraman Goldstein only TTV's second cameraman instead of their first? Well, offhand, I'd say it's because I'm their first. Exactly. Nothing personal, mind, Fatso, but I reckon it's blatant favouritism brought about by the anti-Welsh element on the board of directors. No, he isn't, Tap, no. It was a question of experience and length of service. How do you make that out? When did you join Trelpridge Television Service? Uh, last Friday week. Uh -huh. Well, so did I. What time? Half past twelve. Ah, there you are then. I joined at twenty past. <laughs> <laughs> and just what is the Welsh wangling word basher yakking on about this morning? Charming. Remember that little mouthful, Fatso, will you? I may want to send it to my Uncle Edwin, the solicitor and ironmonger, for a bit of suing. <laughs> what, is this kettle flogging falling off a bit? Now, look, are you two photographical geniuses ready for the rehearsal? Well, we would be if there was anything to photograph. Ah, yes. Well, it's been a bit of a hurled up with the scenery. Why? Another strike at Dagenham? <laughs> Your relatives get everywhere. <laughs> oh, no, Mr. Bates dropped the four sided clangor. Mr. Perfrey, can you spare a minute? Aye, aye. What's Alfred Hitchcock want? <laughs> come in, Alf! I I'm coming, Mr. Murray. Sir. I was just checking the camera crew were ready, sir. Yeah, well, never mind them. Have you seen any sign of our leading actor, Mr. Alistair Scott Hanson? <laughs> Not so much as a haven between his double barrels. <laughs> now, there's no need to panic just because we haven't got any scenery or actors and first episode is supposed to go out tomorrow night. I mean, all we have to... I think I'm going to faint. <laughs> yes, well, that might help. Yeah, if we were short of leading actresses, uh, it would have been a piece of cake, sir. I mean, a quick word and the show like a wiggling winny, and I'm sure she'd have a Yes, yeah, I'm sure she would have done, too, and that would not have helped. She's very artistic and artistical, sir. She is also a bit rude. <laughs> ah, yes, yes, for just a minute. Uh, just a minute. Who, who was it who suggested rough realism? <laughs> Tell me that. Um, what could be more realistic than wiggling winny in the examination room when the doctor says, take your clothes... <laughs> I wonder if Mr. Scott Hanson will belong, sir. I trust not. I also trust Mr. Bates will produce the odd morsel of scenery between now and tomorrow night. If he doesn't, Z Ambulances is going to look as bare as that was the week that was without the studio audience. <laughs> yes, and that reminds me. Who are those chorus girls they always show at the end of the program? <laughs> well, I don't know who the other two are, sir, but the one in the middle is Wiggling Winnie. <laughs> who else? My dear chaps, I'm absolutely prostrate with apologies. A thousand, no, no, a million apologies. Pardon? Oh, you must be Mr. Scott. A hafen. Hanson. But of course. I've had an absolutely ghastly time trying to park my penny farthing. <laughs> penny farthing? Well, as an actor, one does like to be recognised. Not that anyone will ever forget me after my last little telly epic. I doubt if I shall ever live that stink. Well, let's get down to the first episode of Z Ambulances, shall we? Unfortunately, there's been a slight hold-up with the scenery for the ward, so we'd better run through the actual ambulance sequences. Mr. Phillips, you mm -hmm. uh, rehearsed this stuff, haven't you? Oh, yes, yes, in a scout's hut that Maigret wouldn't have been seen dead in. <laughs> uh, we'll start from where the ambulance is proceeding to Old Town, Mr. Scott Hanson, and Phillips and I will go up into the control room and see how it looks. Now, are we all set, Janet? Not quite. I've, I've got trouble with my stopwatch. Now, what's wrong with that? It stopped. <laughs> then watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Control room. What is it, Pertwee? If we're going to have any more of jokes like that, would you mind turning my earphones off? <laughs> Sorry, pardon. Stand by, studio. We'll take it from scene five in the ambulance driving compartment. Do you want the sound effect of the motor running? Yes, please. <laughs> oh. 
short scene, wasn't it? I think we can safely assume that they've got the wrong record on. Perhaps they were playing the record too fast and they couldn't take the corner. <laughs> On the other hand, um, well, it could be that I'm talking utter nonsense. <laughs> Tell Grams to try again, please, Janet. Cue Grams, shovel the last lot up and try again, please. Cue Hanson, played up sound and vision. You know your trouble, Clancy. You need another packet of chips. Yeah. If we hadn't got an emergency in the back, I'd have had them and all, you great Scottish nit. <laughs> Do you ever hear the like of that tour away in the back? I brought my leg, he says. <laughs> Too lazy to set it himself. Yeah. <laughs> There's no helping some people. Yeah, they must think we've got no else to do but drive this ambulance round picking up casualties. BD to Z Ambulance 1. <laughs> BD, whatever that is, to Z Ambulance 1, report your position. We're sitting in the front seat, slowly. <laughs> Thank you, Z Ambulance 1. Here. And do you know what Dr. Barlow said we should have done when we brought in that bloke? <laughs> that bloke would have been knocked down by a tram. A pr I nearly said a pram, then. <laughs> knocked down by a tram and broken his leg. No. He said, next time, tell him to hop on a bus. <laughs> BD to Z Ambulance 1. Proceed at once to the rover's return where an incident has been reported. <laughs> oh, blimey. <laughs> Ina Sharples has bought a drink at last. <laughs> On our way, love. Fade. Cut to interior pub. Shot five. Uh, Pertwee, Pertwee, per 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 clear Hanson and what's his name from the ambulance set. Coming to the pub set now. Pertwee? Can you hear me, Pertwee? Peekaboo, Pertwee? That's odd. Where's he gone? Pertie? Pertie, 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 Pertie? His earphones must have gone dead. I don't think so, sir. Look, look. He's, he's on the pub set behind the bar. What? Pertwee? What's that? What's that? I'm, I'm, I'm busy serving... I'm busy serving the customers. Lummy, who put real beer in the bar? You're right. Even Pertwee can't get like that on cold tea. Pertwee, cue the actors to start. Start! Here. <laughs> yeah. Both of them are halfway through their fourth already. Pertwee, what's been going on? I told you I didn't want real beer in that pub scene. I just wanted something that looks like it. I oh, know. But it's not beer. It's scotch. <laughs> Come on, that... They're all drinking pints. In that case, an actor's life for me. And for me. Pertwee, stop that. Which way did it go? <laughs> Come out of there and cue in Mr. Hanson and the other driver. Yeah, you know what you are, don't you? <laughs> You're a spoiled fool. Tune them to enter. Oh, very well, very well. I've had enough already. <laughs> Camera one onto the pub door. We want to see Jock and Clancy enter and see the fight in progress. Shot seven. Jock, yeah, we should pick up a full load here. Right. This bottle's furniture, they're using the lot. Yeah. Mr. No Shut up, Pertwee. Camera two. Close up on the landlord as he breaks the chair over Hanson's head. Be quiet! What shall we do first, Clancy? Pick up the kite, or join in the fight. Ah! No! Stop me and Shades of Gladys Cooper. Who did that? Stop the action. I want a word. Acting, I'll do. Getting clobbered with a chair is another thing. That's out. Right out. Who's the equity representative? I've got an absolute corker of a complaint. What on earth is going on down... Mr. Mary, sir! Please! Oh, what is it, Pertwee? I'm very, I'm very sorry to interrupt. Well, would, you, would you mind send, sending for a real ambulance? What? Something happened to Mr. Hanson? No, to me. It's these three. The first lot was Scotch. 
the rest really was cold tea. <laughs> no, I don't feel very well. <laughs> Mr. Bates. Yes. Mr. Bates, we have exactly three minutes before we go on the air with the first episode of Z Ambulances. Would you mind telling me just how you propose we do it? I've no idea. But your predicament does seem to be just the tiniest bit my fault, I'll agree. What happened? Well, I sent the first lot of designs down to the scene apartment by mistake, so they've made up the ward with four solid walls, and I rather wish I was dead. <laughs> well, it could be worse. At least ace cameraman Goldstein is walled up inside. Well, has he got his camera in there as well? Oh, no, that's still outside where he left it before we walled... It's not going to help, though, is it? <laughs> no, not with the Tommy's chat. It's Uncle Edwin has solicited an arm monger about it. No. What are we going to do? How are we going to shoot that scene in the ward? There isn't time to take one of the walls down now. Oh, no. Look, look. Shoot it all from a camera. A bad lot Mr. Phillips suggested originally, sir. Oh, did I suggest that? Hmm. I say, I am proud. <laughs> Shrewd, that's what you are, Leslie. Shrewd. A keen brain, coupled with an ability to grasp the situation quickly. Well, grasp this one. We haven't got a camera above that set. Oh. Well, a chap can't think of everything. <laughs> Look, there's only one thing for it. Look, that's how we'll have to do it with the camera crane, sir. Look, if we send it to maximum height, the camera could just about clear the top of the walls. You. If it has to lift the camera and fat so, that motor's going to get flaming hot. <laughs> Mr. Murray, this is my only 30 seconds to go before transmission. What? But we go down and, and warn Johnson he's going to be airborne. We'll give him instructions from this control room here. Yeah, with pleasure, sir, but he, he won't like it. I've told him to flutter off in the past, but he never has. Hurry, man, hurry! Fade up sound on the monitor screen, please, Janet. This is the Troutbridge Television Service. Troutbridge has favourite television. Mr. Murray, I've just told that so that he's for the eye jump, and he wants a word. It, yep, what is it, Johnson? I'm not happy. <laughs> I'm not, I'm definitely not happy. Fatso doesn't want to fly through the air with the greatest of difficulty. I don't know whose idea it was, but he's a rotten, and a rotten, stinking rotten at that. Shut up, Johnson. Get on with it. I don't want to. I want to go home. I'm not happy. But we get him up on that crazy camera. The commercials are coming up. With pleasure, sir. Come on, alley hook, talk. I don't want to go. Put me down. You don't know where I've been. <laughs> I am the technical sales manager of Wynn Stanley Washing Machines, and I've got news of a great breakthrough in our industry. Here at the Wynn Stanley Washing Machine Factory, laboratory tests have shown that 90%. <laughs> With the latest equipment, Wynn Stanley technicians <laughs> worked behind locked doors for five years in order to ensure Wynn Stanley Washing Machines increase your consumer participation watchability by 15% over any other washing machine. Don't forget that for the next month, every Win Stanley washing machine will have an absolutely free, newly minted penny stuck to its lid. <laughs> Win Stanley's technicians are proud of that penny. Hurry while stocks last, so you can spend it. <laughs> Bully for Win Stanley. Never mind, Winston. Look at the monitor screen. Fatso's only halfway up the wall. I'm not surprised. I'm halfway up the wall myself. <laughs> but we, what's happening? Why doesn't camera one go up? It can't, sir. There's a voltage reduction, and that's as far as it can lift Fatso. <laughs> Janet, get our electricians to compensate for the voltage reduction quick. Right. And now, TTV presents the first episode of its serial, Z Ambulances. Right, uh, twiddle the titles. I, I mean, uh, uh, whiz the words round. Uh, Roll captions. Uh, you're so right. <laughs> Electrician switch on the booster for the power in ten seconds, sir. At last. Fade up sound in studio. Cue them. Get it up! Go on, get it up, oh, you great love. <laughs> get the camera above the wall. No, it can't. It's stuck. I don't remember those lines in the script. They aren't in it. Let's put we in John. They're under the microphone. Go on, wriggle the bell. <laughs> Shake yourself. No, don't, don't shiver. But do, oh, do something to get it out for Pete's sake, you two-ton tear away. Power booster coming on. Now. No, it's no good. It won't budge. I've tried everything. <laughs> Lummy. 
didn't half go, did it? <laughs> Tato, where are you? Up on the roof. <laughs> Who did it? Who flung Tato up here? He's a rotten, a rotten, dirty thing. He's rotten. Get me down. I want to come down. I'm not happy. Get me down, somebody. I want my mum, Minnie. <laughs> Sir, we can explain, but it's a long story. No, we won't bother you with it now, sir. No, we'll call back, sir. And you're not so busy. Uh, about 1985. <laughs> what a lovely office you've got here. Enchanting. Good morning, sir. Yeah, nice to see you, sir. Remember us, too. Come back here. I said it wouldn't work. <laughs> Never has yet, sir. Well, one can but try. Now, will you be quiet and listen to me? I am not going to dwell on the subject of your completely novel five second transmission last night. My feelings about that will be better expressed in a long, long memo to the company's directors. I was afraid it might. Uh, would it help, sir, if, if we each bought a, a Win Stanley washing machine? No, it would not. Oh, well, then we won't bother them, will we? <laughs> well, if you're not going to discuss our slightly shortened version of Z ambulances, sir, what exactly is it that's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? I'll tell you what's wrong. Oh, that's jolly nice of you, sir. <laughs> you two must have seen it because you both initialed it this morning. It's Pertwee's claim form for expenses last night. Now, listen to it. Item one. Mm. To buying a 50-foot ladder to get cameraman Johnson back. £35.10. <laughs> yeah, well, it was up a heck of a height, sir. <laughs> Item two. To buying a second 50-foot ladder because the first one broke. Forty-five guineas. Item three, to hiring a helicopter to get Johnson out through the roof because the second ladder wasn't strong enough either. Sixty-two guineas. Item four, to buying a new power witch for the helicopter because the first one fused. Eighteen pounds, two and sixpence. Yes, well, they'll all come in handy again in a minute, won't they, sir? Come in handy? What for? I've just had another disaster, call, sir. This Cameron and Goldstein is still walled up inside Mr. Bates' set. <laughs> yeah, we forgot to let him out last night at all. And that was Leslie Phillips, Stephen Murray and John Pertwee doing an unfortunate to the TV lark written by Laurie Wyman. Leslie Phillips was the director, Stephen Murray was the producer, John Pertwee was the floor manager. Henry Povey was played by Richard Pendicott, Taffy Goldstein was Tenniel Evans, and the controller of TTV was played by Michael Bates. The recorded production was by Alistair Scott Johnston.